Welcome. Um, I will uh, first start to give you a small introduction um, how I came uh, to become an artist, uh, how I ended up to become uh, an art. Um, then I talk you a little bit about uh, 3D printing and uh, on the end I show you something uh, about uh, really uh, big sculptures I'm busy with. Um, it's going from uh, sculptures from uh, 15 centimeter high to uh, 15 meter high for the moment. Um, this is always um, a very nice slide to uh, begin with. Um, this is the workshop in um, my school, uh, the academy. Yeah? And it's very important for me to see um, a new generation that is uh, busy with the computer but don't have any more uh, the feeling of uh, the reality. Um, I'm somebody that is still like uh, one of the last that is in the middle. I'm uh, a child of my time, I'm working with computer. So for a um, new media world, I'm mostly um, uh, too new um, uh, or uh, I'm too old school because I still um, make a sculpture on a pedestal. And for a old school world, like uh, sculpture, I'm too new media. So it's going from the one thing to the other. Um, of course, if you graduate, you don't have immediately space as a student. So uh, then I came up uh, in a very small uh, workshop, 20 square meter, but I made um, a lot of sculptures there. Um, I was immediately interested in uh, making really big sculptures. But at the same moment, um, sculpture itself was... Um, yeah, I had the feeling, I, I saw it. Um, I saw not a lot of uh, new developments in sculpture. And I um, had the luck to uh, be in class with um, a guy that came from uh, architecture. So I learned to know uh, 3D software. So on that level, I started to make imaginations of how a sculpture could be in reality in a big size. I didn't have the money on that time to make a sculpture of 2-3 meters. But with computer, it was uh, perfectly possible to visualize. Um, the trees, the sculpture, it's all uh, computer generated. It are only the clouds and um, um, the background, the buildings that are uh, reality. Um, this is actually the real sculpture, of course, because you see it on a white background. It's sometimes very difficult uh, for my uh, images to see what is real, what is virtual. But for me, that idea was uh, to combine two things like um, the new uh, organic blob shapes that uh, we see in architecture, but still the, the old school uh, architecture um, that uh, draws with a pen and paper. So I was not really interested in the old of the new, but uh, much more in the combination. And if this would be realized, like you saw on the previous lender, it could be not only a sculpture, it could not be only a scale model, but it could also be a pavilion, it could be architecture. You could really have like uh, the side entrance where you can uh, get in. So I was much more interested to find the boundaries between um, design, architecture, sculpture, because sculpture on itself, I had the feeling there was not um, a lot of new things happening. Um, so of course, from uh, making things virtual, um, I feel myself a sculpture, and on that level I wanted to make it rea in reality. Um, on school I had uh, the luck to, to find one uh, very interesting professor where I had a nice discussion of, and I think that is the most important to learn to um, uh, develop a, a vision, because that is something that you cannot learn out of, out of a book, because through the animation, uh, sculpting, that I think mostly I learned on myself and not really on uh, the art school. So this sculpture is still made on a very classical way. It's made in clay and then uh, with a plaster mold. But it was my uh, first yellow polyester blob sculpture, um, one of many uh, to follow. Um, this was not in uh, my studio, but it's an um, artist residence space for uh, artists in Belgium. It's uh, in Genk, where you have um, the old coal mine history, and they are transforming buildings to... Um, um, yeah, artists can take uh, the opportunity of them. They have a keramic uh, workshop, metal workshop, and you can use uh, the space for free, like for two months. So it's really nice to, uh, if you just graduate, to have those kinds of opportunities. Uh, there are similar sculptures on that level. Um, then, uh, like I told you, sculpture, that's not really my thing anymore on that time in my, uh, my life. So I came much more uh, to architecture. And I actually ended up with making sculptures like this because of animations. 
I was making animations a little bit um, on a surrealistic way, like uh, Dali and uh, René Magritte. So I was making buildings that were uh, flying away as helicopters, buildings that are uh, folding open, buildings that are collapsing, that are uh, crawling, bending at each other. So really playing with uh, architecture. So I was, uh, again, not interested just in architecture, but in uh, the combination. So this is actually a house that is folding open and, and giving birth to like a yellow egg. But because the house is uh, folding open, you cannot speak anymore about architecture because it's not functional. So the architecture is getting sculpture. And the yellow egg you could really see as a huge apartment building. I think and, um, the prints you see on uh, buses where you can look through on the one side and you have uh, the print on the other side. So it would be perfectly possible to build a yellow building and you can look, uh, try to... And actually... In the yellow egg, you see windows, but the windows are not drawn, they are only because of the reflection. Then I wanted to make this in reality, and I don't want it to go like uh, we're um, in a waste um, atmosphere, yeah? we're building things, we're destroying things, so I really wanted to build it with bricks, not like um, an architecture that is uh, playing with his cardboard and throw it away after he saw it. I wanted to build it in bricks. So I went to a model shop and said, eh, I want 10,000 uh, little bricks. Mm, that was pretty expensive. Um, so I just started to um, put um, yeah, 10 kilo of clay, cost me five euro, and I started my own uh, building factory, um, especially because I wanted like the smallest brick that is um, possible to, um, uh, to use. So I came up with a small brick of five millimeter by nine millimeter. That was like the smallest I could use. This is actually a picture of uh, the real sculpture, and this gives you a um, better idea of how it's uh, constructed. Um, a very nice experience for me, but the only problem was it was really uh, disappointing because in the time that I was building like one scale model, um, they built just a completely new house in my street. So on that level, it was not really good for your uh, motivation as an artist. Um, so I started up making uh, smaller models. Uh, these are not made anymore um, manually in that sense. It's more with uh, casting. Uh, these are bricks of two by three millimeter. I would never be able to, uh, to um, put it together if I wanted to make them all manually. Um, this is actually a project uh, inspired on a, an old military hospital in uh, Ostend. And uh, later, uh, actually, um, after I was working on that project, I get uh, the invitation to make a um, huge print of uh, 4 meter by 14 meter, where I give a sort of surrealistic impression of how all the buildings in the park are um, seeing. Um, this is actually the sculpture uh, Kolbatrots. Uh, the previous one is Seotops. Uh, so on the print, uh, the print is called Sorbarchiofetops. And it's actually the four sculptures, a resume of that, Seotops, Triafetops, Kolbatrops, uh, Korregnots. They are not Flemish uh, words, they are not English words. They are really playing like um, in Seotops, you can have the first three letters. If you turn them backwards, you have uh, the word uh, Huis, home in Flemish. Uh, tops, you can still see the word Blobs if you turn them backwards. And as an artist, it's um, important for me to um, get your audience to let people get a step into your world. So everybody knows uh, the Wikipedia. So I uh, launched uh, Nikipedia. If you want, you can Google to Nikipedia. My name is Nick, and there you can see all the titles and uh, what they are meaning and what uh, all the sculptures are meaning. So I came back to, to Keramik. I'm still from my uh, game, addicted, uh, game addiction in my childhood. I wanted to see how can I imitate nature? How closely can I imitate a coral or a coral reef? Um, for people that ever worked in clay, yeah, clay is uh, very strong, but only when it's baked. So uh, uh, until it's baked, it's very um, uh, difficult to make a shape like that. I was living for a few months in Berlin and after visiting a lot of museums I get like a uh, brainwash and I was actually much more impressed by uh, the tubes of uh, water that are uh, running through the streets uh, in building constructions. So I came up with the idea I want to make this kind of natural forms but with um, industrial materials. So I came up with uh, this idea to make a coral of uh, 30 meter by 40 meter. Again, just uh, buying the iron would be costing something of 100,000 euros. It was not really uh, my budget. So on that moment, it was just a virtual ID. Um, 
ready and my deep freeze till um, some opportunities came up. And one of the opportunities was to build um, a huge sculpture for an exhibition. Um, the only problem was it had to be ready in like two months. A lot of my sculptures were um, a lot more uh, labor intensive. So I just came up with the same idea, not an iron, but cheaper. I made um, my own plastic tubes, uh, put my own uh, lenses on it. And so I came to build actually a sculpture of uh, eight meter by eight meter. It's a scale model. But the um, nice thing as a sculptor, you always have um, uh, shortness in space. This I can still um, uh, drive with uh, just a personal uh, car. You can just put it in your car. You're only three days busy with uh, screwing everything together and uh, screwing it loose. Um, an oppor another opportunity came um, together with um, a colleague, uh, Boy Stappart. I was invited to uh, do an exhibition. Uh, but we both had something, okay, get a painting on the wall, uh, get a sculpture on a pedestal. We don't really want to do that, we, we want to do something different. And on the same moment in the, the museum in Ostend was running an exhibition of uh, Georges van Tongerlo, the stale. So we came up with the idea to do something about uh, Van Duisberg and uh, Hans Arp and uh, giving a connection to um, um, the Obed in uh, Strasbourg. It's like uh, the very first uh, dance room in, in the stale in a modernistic way. So we came up with this idea. Um, I made uh, the arena. The arena is actually the alphabet of uh, Van Duisburg. So if you look closely, you can see every five uh, boxes you have actually a letter, like the letter E upside down. And it's a complete arena. What was the most beautiful part for me as an artist, I was not able to build this like on my own in 10 days. So it was the first time I really worked with a team uh, of craftsmanship to uh, build a sculpture in a very short period. It was only a sculpture that was not um, just a sculpture for its standing. We did uh, private parties in it, uh, we rented the space, there were people that came uh, doing a dance performance in it, inspired on games. We did uh, game parties, uh, there were fashion shows, we invited other artists to uh, do an exhibition in that space. So it was really a space that came alive and that was much more interesting for me than just like uh, a next gallery opening where uh, everybody comes to give you a handshake and uh, drink a glass of champagne. So that was really an important step for me. And it was not only a sculpture, it was really like building spaces. It was almost going to, to architecture. So I came up with going much more crazy with architecture. I inspired these pieces on uh, the, the cottage style you, you had in uh, Flanders at the coast on the, the previous time. And for me, this is not really futuristic architecture, but it's like a futuristic architecture of the past. If you would see that in 19 or even 20th century, it could be futuristic. Today we have a completely different level of uh, how the, the future will look. And on that same level, I'm still busy as a sculptor on a traditional way. What is shape and what is uh, the skin of a sculpture? What is the skin of a shape? So also here, uh, the dunes and um, the clouds, they are picture, but like the beach, the water and uh, the sculptures, they are completely uh, computer generated. Um, the games I played, it were not uh, driving games or uh, fighting games, but it were all the games like uh, SimCity, Pizza Tycoon, uh, Caesar, uh, Civilization, really the building games, but also games where there was really a um, strategic. And I think, especially in future work, you still see that development of games. Uh, for another exhibition, I was invited to do um, um, a new piece about a monument. And I was very inspired by uh, the Basilic of uh, Kuckelberg in Brussels. And I wanted to do like a um, um, renovation of um, that old basilic. Um, of course, you will never have permission for um, uh, a heritage monument to uh, cut it down and rebuild it. But on computer, I was possible to give my impression of how it really could look like. In Belgium, we have really nice museums, but the only problem is most of the buildings that uh, the museums are uh, in are never built as a museum. So I think in the most uh, museums of contemporary art in Belgium, um, they have huge spaces, but uh, the door is only like three meter high. So I came up with the idea, a little bit like the, the industrial color. Uh, this could actually be a sculpture of 120 meter long, where you would really have it uh, in a little truck where it could be pulled down and pulled up together like um, a mechano box. So it's actually a big tent and then you have all um, iron tubes that are connected to each other. This is just a virtual impression and this gives you an idea how I came up to make it physically. Um, 
As an artist, especially as a young artist, um, you're mostly invited for an exhibition very short in front, a few months if you have lucky. Um, you're always uh, dreaming of uh, having two years to make something, but that's never the reality. So I needed to search a way how to game up with that in a very fast uh, period. Um, if I make a scale model of um, a sculpture of 120 meter, the tubes that were like 40 centimeter came up to be 3-4 millimeter. So if I wanted to build that in reality, I would be uh, busy for several months. So I came up with uh, doing that for 3D printing. This is not my first 3D print. I will uh, tell you a little bit more about that. But you can really see um, today in Levin, uh, they have printers of two meter high, but um, this is uh, really expensive. So we came up to print it almost in like um, 20 pieces and just connect it. So you really have the feeling that it's like a um, polyester blob, but it's actually a 3D print. And they introduced also some new materials, like um, they used uh, more in an uh, amateur world, like um, a lot of um, uh, amateur sculptures, they don't have the money to uh, make a bronze sculpture, so they use uh, imitation of bronze. And actually I imitated the plastic sculpture, so you really have the feeling that it's like uh, iron, but iron of 2-3 uh, millimeter welded together. This is the piece, it's like uh, yeah, 140 centimeter long. And this is actually my first um, moment I get up with 3D printing. I was invited for an exhibition in uh, the Mocha Museum in Shanghai. And I was really, okay, hmm, uh, China, yeah. Um, I don't really like Chinese art. It's not my culture, it's not my thing. The most Chinese art I really love is uh, Chinese uh, artists that are living in a Western world and that use the Western pattern. So I wanted to create a piece that would stand in both cultures. Um, I was also very impressed by um, the, the British sculptor Henry Moore. Henry Moore is actually a sculptor. They say he would invent a hole in a sculpture. It's really crazy that in our uh, Western tradition, nobody before Henry Moore, nobody before 100 years ago, ever thought about making a hole in a sculpture. It's so clear, so obvious, but nobody thought about it. So in China, I visited a lot of um, Chinese gardens. Uh, you know the, the rocks that are cut out by the water, the artificial rocks they use in the temple gardens for meditation. So I came up with the idea, I want to make a futuristic rock. A futuristic rock. Um, of course, I was also uh, inspired by um, uh, the bones of uh, the human body. And I made 700, 800 drawings till I came up with uh, this drawing. Um, I really go all the way. I want to become uh, a piece that I can say, I can only change it, but I cannot adapt it anymore on this moment in my life. And that's the reason I take a lot of steps and the computer allows me to skip a lot of steps and go really to, uh, to the bone. Of course, my problem was I could design that in the computer. Uh, I could go further than uh, people like Henry Moore. I could uh, just delete something, go back in, hide it, go back. Uh, I could go much farther than where I could be able to carve in a marmor block with my hands. But the problem was how could I really get that physical? So I came up with uh, 3D printing. Uh, I thought, okay, I have to exhibit it in China. I will 3D print it there, probably cheaper, but um, they said, hey, you're a young guy, uh, no, no, don't come with something like that, that's too difficult, we don't start on that. So I came up with a company in uh, Louvain, um, after talking for a few years, they wanted to go through with it, um, they looked at it with their engineers, we adapted a few things, and now the beautiful uh, thing is that uh, a few years later, I'm giving lectures to their engineers. So that is really nice how an art world and how uh, an artist can also give energy to engineers to look to new possibilities. I'm not using 3D printing just because the machine is there, but I'm really looking how can I be innovative and how can I skip the boundaries. As a sculptor, I don't want just to make a nice piece, but I want to look in art history, how can you do a next step? Uh, we are all looking to invent something new and uh, to invent something new is hard, but you have to try to, to meet those boundaries. Um, I made also an animation of that uh, same sculpture um, and the animation you're really flying through the sculpture like you know the, the movies uh, of the human body and in an animation you really have the feeling that you're walking to really big caves. This is actually one picture of this sculpture inside. 
And this is how it's presented in the museum. You had really the big uh, projection, the big animation, and then the really small 3D prints. It was 40 centimeter. I had to take it with me with the airplane. So uh, it was uh, custom made on uh, the size of the hand baggage. Um, I made more and more sculptures like that, a uh, little bit more figurative. Uh, there are have something more of an animal, like uh, especially this one. You see, like uh, the um, uh, ears of a devil. You see the the crab uh, feet. You see like a bison uh, back and a lion uh, body. So it's really for me much more like um, okay, children in the future they will uh, be able to create their own uh, pets. They take some robotic parts, they take some uh, uh, anatomical parts, some organs, they put it all together and they will be able to make their own pet. So I wanted as an artist to see how can I go in that. On the one hand I was busy with sculpture, but on the other hand I was looking to make uh, creatures. Really finding the boundary between what is still art and what is getting more like a Disney creature. Um, I exhibit them in really the white cubes, but this was a, a picture from an exhibition in a 17th century castle. And for me, it's really nice how the contrast works and also the link with uh, the Art Nouveau and the Baroque image. Um, this sculpture looks much more like an insect, but it actually has no volume. And that's really the crazy thing. You can make a sculpture that exists only out of lines. If I ever would be wanted to build this in a huge size, it would just be impossible because you're unable to reach it. Because the 3D printer is working in layers, it's just building up. And you don't uh, need to take care of what is going inside. You can go as crazy as you wish. Um, I got a question of um, the Museum M uh, in Louvain and uh, they asked me to do a collaboration with a surgeon. So I was really interested, but at the same time I had something, what do you, I have to do with a scientist? Uh, it's not my world, uh, they have a different background. Um, so I ended up by taking uh, lessons in the hospital uh, with that professor uh, and he came in my art studio taking lessons with me. I don't really think we learned a lot about each other, but we learned uh, each other's passion. And I started from his medical books, um, using his medical books as an inspiration to make a new art piece. And it was actually a professor that was really uh, innovative on a world scale. He invented a technique to transplant a larynx, like that tube in our uh, uh, neck. Uh, I thought, okay, it's a small tube, but it's actually a tube of five centimeter. And for somebody that has um, like cancer now, um, if it's a few centimeters, they can just cut it away. Our human body has a little bit of a reserve on that. But if it's bigger, you are dead. Now they invented a te technique by planting in uh, an organ from another human in your arm. And you're like going through that in life for a few months. And then they're transplanting it in your neck. Um, why do they put it first in your arm? Because it has to adapt to your body and the veins are too small to uh, uh, sew uh, surgically. And there's actually the anatomical drawings you see of, uh, of this process. And this is a sculpture I made of it. Um, it was in the beginning not my idea to, to make a figurative head, to make a figurative sculpture. And I really wanted to have like a big piece, it's um, a drawing of uh, 8 meter high. It's really the idea like you go to a god temple in the old Greece and you have like the, the statue of uh, Athena, it's really like that feeling. And because the space was really um, uh, illuminated, uh, very diffuse, you had really the feeling that the sculpture came out of the virtual world. There were several people, uh, the audience there uh, in the museum, that were really like touching the wall. They could not believe it was just a flat 2D print. So that was really a nice experience. But I was able to make a sculpture. Um, but again, I was fascinated. I was able to draw a sculpture in my computer, but I was not able to figure how could I make this in reality. I wanted to make it in reality, but I had no idea how could I make something so complex in reality. Um, for me, this is going about the black and the yellow, the good and the bad. It's almost like Kerbal Welt, the human uh, body um, erased uh, from his skin. But at the same time, I'm busy with um, an organic shape, a more industrial shape, and looking how sculptures could connect into each other. I'm not busy as um, a surgeon. My organs doesn't have to be a reality. I just make a human organ and I make uh, 10 variations on it just by looking at it as a sculpture and use that as my Lego cubes to make my, uh, my sculpture. 
I searched for almost two years. Um, it took me, I think, thousand hours to draw this sculpture uh, printable. So I was able to 3D print it. Um, this is actually the sculpture 3D printed. The sculpture is uh, 60 centimeter high. Every vein is like two, three millimeter. Um, and yeah, I was unable to print it at that time in the two colors. And I was unable to paint it in those two colors. So I get again frustrated. Uh, for people that want to see the sculpture, it will be um, on the 3D print show in uh, November here in London and uh, also in Paris. So I came up um, with uh, much more complexer sculptures. And at the same time, I started to painting sculptures again. Uh, because the 3D print still has those crazy lines. And I don't want that people say, oh, wow, it's a 3D print. No, no, I want that people say, OK, it's a nice sculpture, or uh, uh, they have an affection with it. Um, this is painted completely manually. Uh, you have the idea of uh, two shapes, but it's printed in one piece. And it's really like um, cutting off uh, the hairs of a brush, putting them on a wire, and going almost like the dentist with some mirrors inside. Today, we have 3D printers that are able to, to print in color, but at that time, it was not uh, possible. And even today, uh, plastic 3D print is not UV protected. So it changes its colors very fast. These are car paints, they are UV protected. And as an artist, I'm not using 3D printing as a prototype, but as a final product. So my clients, they want an art piece that is not like uh, melting after 10 years or uh, fading its colors. Again, a uh, strange question. Um, I was invited. Uh, we know the, the old Flemish masters, Jordaens, Rubens, Van Dijk. I was invited um, with the title, uh, The New Flemish Masters, to make an art piece uh, inspired on those old masters. Um, an incredible honor, but at the same time, again, what do I have to do with those guys? Um, so I was searching for the organic shapes in the paintings of Rubens. I came up with uh, the Volumtions Women of Rubens and used that as an inspiration for um, a new sculpture. Um, I had only two months, so my 3D print was never ready for the exhibition. And I made an animation, you can uh, Google it. And in the animation, you see like all the blobs is, uh, going uh, out of each other, like uh, the skeleton going through each other, and really have an animation where you see the sculpture alive 360 degrees around. Um, I'm playing with elements like um, the skeleton that is normally inside the body, I put outside the body. You can still see um, uh, the belly button, you can see the cheeks of the bells. So it's not anymore a figurative uh, figure, but it was the inspiration to make this uh, figure. Um, to do just a car paint, to do just um, uh, one color, it's easy for a sculpture. It's nice, it's okay. But I got a little bit uh, homesick to um, the very first slide I show you, the studio where I was really experimenting, uh, experimenting with uh, uh, materials, with plaster and things like that. So this sculpture is completely hand-painted. Again, you have the idea that there are two volumes in each other, but it's only one, um, one volume. Another sculpture. Um, as an artist, and that's really a different uh, path, you're busy with art history. I see a lot of designers and they are looking around, but they are not looking to their history. I'm really somebody that, that uh, loves history and that tries to make connections with it. So on that level, I started to have the idea I want to do something with um, the old photography, like really the, the pictures you see with the movement. So I started to animate sculptures in my computer but don't take just the render of it, but take like uh, the render you have with a picture camera where you have like uh, the long uh, picture time where you see really the, the shadings and uh, things that fading. Um, this is actually not one render, but it are three renders on a different um, uh, technique, a different level. The one where I experimented with the color, the other one with the reflection, the other one with the deepness. And those kind of renders I, I immersed in Photoshop, uh, starting to, to search really what uh, was the most impressive. I made a series of um, eight pieces of that, but they were selected from more than a thousand um, animations and uh, renders and stills I, uh, I made. What is for me really important is that you have on the one side the feeling of um, a flower that is folding open. It has something alien, but it has also something very religious and uh, sacral. These are other uh, two-dimensional uh, pieces. 
And then I got a really strange question. Um, I did um, a contest, uh, um, I got a prize, and I learned to uh, meet a businessman, and he said, um, I bought just a new building, I will put uh, 70 apartments in it, an exhibition space, a private exhibition space, meeting rooms, a bar. Um, I still have one problem, I have two rooftop, two terraces on that building. I don't really know what to do. Can you design me a proposal? Can you design me a sculpture for that? You have one limitation, um, it has to be a light sculpture. It cannot be heavy, it's an old building, a 19th century building, so we cannot use a lot of weight. Wow! Fantastic opportunity, um, I started to make some ideas and actually one of my first ideas he, he chose and uh, we built it. Um, I made a lot of smaller ideas because I thought it would be too expensive, um, it will be uh, too drastic uh, impact in the building. Um, but luckily for me, the, the collector, the businessman, he, uh, he go with the approach. This is the 19th century building. Uh, the back are all apartments. The front is uh, the bar and the exhibition space. And I designed it to two yellow uh, blobs on top of it. Um, for me, it has to be a terrace that was still functional. And at the same time, I wanted to have really big holes. So you have the feeling of a little bit protection, but you have the feeling of not be um, grabbed in a, in a prison. Um, of course, again, um, I was living in a small studio. I had not the uh, people or uh, the space to build something. So I started to, to look for companies that could help me. And actually, the complete sculpture is um, sculpted by machine. There are no hands that uh, were able to sculpt it. And we made uh, the silhouette of the sculpture. Then we put um, blocks of um, uh, polyurethane foam to it. And you know the little machine you can use uh, in a craftsman shop to uh, make a corner, um, to polish it. We just made that machine, but really huge. So we could uh, make the uh, bow all with uh, computer machines. Then we put all the pieces together. And of course, uh, putting the polyester over it was manually. Putting um, uh, the shaving product on it was manually. And that was really the expensive cost. We put uh, almost uh, 2,000 2, liters of polyester on it. And with 12 people, we shaved for almost uh, two months uh, to get it really like industrial uh, soft. And then, of course, the discussion. Will we make it in one piece? Put the pieces together on the spot? Or will we be able to transport it in one piece? Um, in a workshop, you can always finish it much better. Um, so we took a lot of um, regulations, we checked everything, and the pieces are 6 meter uh, 50 by 12 meter and 8 meter high. So you can really transport them uh, by, uh, by this size. This is the end result. Uh, even more crazy, um, this year that uh, businessman came back to me and said, um, yeah, I bought um, some buildings around my property. I will do um, a new uh, extension. Um, can we work again together? We had a fantastic experience. Um, can you design for me a sculpture where there can be a bar inside? Of course, that's already very uh, limited as a, an artist. You have to take deal that there has to be a space inside that sculpture. So I could not work crazy with all that holes because there needed to be a space in it. And the sculpture came on the back of the old building, the back where there are no windows in and that was never mentioned to be shown. This gives you a little bit an idea. You have the old building there and there is a new parking underground and a new building. And I designed this yellow piece. It's almost like um, a fabric that is turning uh, over the buildings. It's uh, 50 meter high. And they ask uh, Louis Vermeer, it's uh, one of the designers of Ferrari. He will design a bar that is uh, going to be inside that sculpture. Another artist, uh, Nat Khan, designed it, uh, another piece on uh, the other wall. This is uh, the drafts. And this is um, a quick look. Uh, you have uh, the street around the city. We had to close down the, the ring from uh, Ghent for uh, two days to building up the sculpture. But I wanted to go, of course, much farther. Um, you had uh, those crazy 3D prints. I wanted to look how can I go even more crazy in reality? How can I build complex shapes in reality? Um, from a private collector, I got a question to uh, design a piece for his uh, garden. And it's a piece that came on a roundabout, on a round point. So I really wanted to have that movement in it. But I got 10 problems with the companies that I was working with. They said, yeah, 
we have more experience with polyester than you. We have uh, the people, we have the place, but we cannot read your drawing anymore because with the front, uh, back, um, the top, just like the classical architecture drawing, those pieces are getting too complex. So I was again stuck in how I could deal with uh, all those sculptures. So I started to um, develop a new system. Um, I got my inspiration from a 3D printer, but at the same time from uh, Michelangelo. Michelangelo made a huge um, uh, discovery. He put just um, his scale model in a bucket of filthy water. And where the filthy water stands still, you get like a little line around the sculpture. And that line he could use to measurement. So on that level, I started to use uh, old uh, 15th century techniques and to use really um, very complex uh, new techniques of 3D printing to make those kind of sculptures. But all the big sculptures are um, carved manually, but looked uh, with my 3D model next to me. Also going to functional elements. This is actually a lantern, so um, the white parts get uh, eliminated at night. And also, um, in Belgium we have sometimes um, really strange uh, laws. This was an old chapel and the door was um, uh, ruined, it was uh, damaged, but at the same time from uh, the government heritage, it was not allowed to remove it. It was not uh, possible to renovate it. So the building developer had a huge problem. So he came to me, can you find a solution for that? So I came up with um, a new doorway that just click over the old door. Heritage is okay, it's not damaged, it's just uh, hide it. They can um, see it again if they want, they can just pull the old door uh, over it. And so this is actually looking very small, but it's almost uh, uh, from the bottom, it's almost six, seven meter high. Um, for an exhibition uh, before, I got a question to design a sculpture inspired on the sea. Uh, was again uh, a nice challenge. So I started to go to the sea and you see really the splashing water. So I started to use that as an inspiration. But to just have that as a sculpture was boring, was not enough for me. So I put it like three legs, so you had much more the idea of a creature. This was not for um, philosophers or uh, an intellectual art um, public, but it's just for um, a beach visitor. So it looks very small on uh, the picture, but it's actually eight meter, three story floor uh, high. This is how it looks in the, in the winter. Um, I got another question um, to design a sculpture for um, a factory, but um, yeah, putting a sculpture of four meter against a factory of 30 meter, what is the use? And to uh, make a sculpture of 30 meter too expensive. So I came up with the idea to, to wrap in the factory with a drawing, almost like a crystal. But at the same time, it's really an old, ugly factory where you have all windows. Uh, they build every year a piece of the factory extension. Um, so I didn't have like a really nice canvas. It was like a painting, but with all holes in it where I had to uh, take considering. So I was searching for a system, how can I make um, that those holes, those um, uh, elements like uh, windows and uh, uh, industrial elements that are uh, necessary for the factory are um, uh, surplus for my painting. So I started to make a grid a little bit uh, to Mondrian, to, to Donald Judd, uh, a grid where I could play with. I could put the sculpture before the grid or after the grid, and I was able to put the windows to really hide them in my painting. It was a grain factory, so it was actually my uh, first client that said, could there not be something more yellow in the picture? Um, so I again started with the idea of really the black blob that's coming from uh, the hell, the yellow blob uh, blocks that are coming from uh, the heaven. Uh, so on that level, you had really the fight between the, the box and the blobs, between an organic shape and a really um, a cubic shape. This is how it looks. It's a print of 2,000 square meter. Unfortunately, uh, world records is on a 6,000 square meter, but uh, maybe one day I can uh, go to that. Here you can really see how you can play with the lines uh, being up, being down. Um, 
developing as an artist, uh, I have now my own studio. I have um, seven people that work for me. Um, so we are on the one kind working for hospitals, doing uh, art integrations, but on the other side working uh, for the art market, just doing exhibitions, uh, galleries. Um, and on that level, I also started to buy my own 3D printer. Um, I have to say, on this moment, I don't think, I think you're still cheaper going to a company than to have your really own machine. But it was really a necessary step for me to learn the technology better and to look how I can work with that technology. Uh, the 3D printer I have is um, a Fortis 250. It's working with uh, two big cartridges, one for the support material, one for the model material. I can print uh, 30 centimeter high, uh, 0 0.1 uh, millimeter correction. And this is what I came up. I wanted to go, of course, bigger than those 30 centimeters. So again, to my childhood, you know, yeah, the chocolate eggs you have with the play and the toys in it, uh, the child surprise. So I started up making a sculpture just like a puzzle that I was able to connect to, get to uh, each other. If I would print it in one piece, I would never be able to paint it. It was actually um, a piece I made for an exhibition in the old uh, Roman Heritage Museum in uh, Tongre. So I came up to go to a completely new direction just because of that invitation for an exhibition. And this is actually an old Roman vase uh, that is folding open like a transformer and putting uh, really the old history again in connection with the new history. It's not a vase that is uh, closed, it's not uh, the robot that is open, but it's really the connection between. Um, what is the beautiful part? It's not um, uh, a sculpture. Of course, you can print so much like you want. As an artist, I do a limitation of uh, five copies on uh, this piece, but I paint it every time in a different color. So this is like uh, the yellow version. Um, a Roman helmet, but uh, in the shape of um, an 18th century castle. It's uh, also a 3D print that will be in London here in uh, November. And I was inspired, like um, the sculpture uh, you see, the bronze is actually the inspired inspiration for uh, the white sculpture. But of course, I go much more complexer than the Roman did. And putting some Viking culture, putting some Roman culture, putting some Spider-Man culture, and putting it all together to a new shape, to a new culture. Also, uh, science fiction, I'm a huge fan, so I used to uh, take uh, inspiration of uh, the alien of Grieger and uh, take inspiration of uh, Roman statues and Hercules to make a sculpture like that. You still have the connection with the old and the new history. Uh, it doesn't feel anymore like a 3D print. Um, the yellow shape, it's like polished for two, three weeks, then painted several times. Um, the other one is not concrete, but it's just imitation, but you have the feeling. And also nice again, I can print this with a printer of 30 centimeter. It's two pieces and you can uh, put them back to each other. But again, I could go really big and this is like uh, an 18, uh, 8 meter high sculpture in uh, concrete. And it's a permanent installation at um, uh, the Hallo Romanian Museum. This is um, a little short introduction to, to what I'm doing and uh, what is my uh, work about. Um, I didn't go really in uh, detail, but um, if you have questions, uh, I'm open to it. Um, let's hear yourself. Thank you. Hiya. Um, great work. Thank you. Um, I wanted to know um, how, you, how you start the process of um, getting to something like this when you're on a computer. Yeah. So you said like technology has a yeah. lot to do with it, but yeah. where, where does that start for you and what do you do? Yeah, I actually started to, to use the computer because I wanted to build big sculptures, make uh, big installations. And as a student, I didn't have the space for that. So I started to use a computer to make my sculpture virtual. Um, I'm using the software 3D Studio Max, but uh, of course you can use Maya, Blender, Cinema VRD. You can use it whatever you want, but I just started 3D Max and it could do what I do. Um, I'm not programming, uh, so I'm not working with uh, processing and uh, putting all uh, codes in my sculptures. I really am uh, an old school sculpture that comes from a belly feeling, uh, comes from a stomach, and I'm really sure that that will make a difference between all the guys that are uh, making sculptures with programming. Um, what I'm doing is actually very simple. I'm uh, throwing a box and uh, extruding an extra box, extruding an extra box, putting a turbo smooth on it that uh, uh, makes uh, my box a little bit more to an organic shape. But it's just a lot of labor, a lot of experience, and a lot of dealing with it. 
So I made sometimes hundreds of sketches, really make um, uh, pieces of sculptures, uh, mirror them, uh, pasting them, copy them, uh, putting them back together, and on that level, sculptures are developing. Um, I have some images, um, like for uh, the sculpture of Rubens uh, I talked about. I just started making the silhouette of the paintings of Rubens that I'm drawing after in a computer. I made uh, 3D models of that. That was not uh, crazy enough, so I used it to starting putting the skeleton on it and to have the impression and uh, the idea that it are two pieces that were fighting with each other. So it's all about illusion and, and playing with that. Um, this is um, sculptures drawing with computer, but they are not programmed. They are not computer-generated sculptures. They are drawn manually. And that's also the reason, like, uh, the blue head, it took me for almost a thousand drawings hours. And, uh, like, the um, helmet took almost uh, three months to just draw all the pieces to have them ready for uh, the machine. Um, I don't know if that's already a small answer on your question. Uh, well, yeah. Or, yeah. Hello. Um, you talked about animating yeah. your work, but you didn't show us any uh, yeah. moving animations. Are there some on your website? Or? Yeah, there are some on the website. Um, the first animations were um, really short animations of like uh, one minute, where you see sculptures build, uh, folding open. Um, it was much more like um, a sketchbook. And I also didn't know what to do with it, because as an artist, I was used to, to say my story in a, um, uh, in a two-dimensional picture or in a sculpture. And movie um, animated images are, for me, so crazy, because um, you, can, you have the fourth dimension. You can do a lot more. So I w was not really sure how to deal with it. Is it uh, an art piece I can sell? Is it something just to add in an exhibition? Um, so on that level, I'm... I started to develop that and to think about a different approach. Um, another um, um, part from uh, the animation was um, I could do that only if I was concentrated. And unfortunately, we're on a time where you also, as an artist, you have to do 100 things at the same time. So the only moments I could really work on animation was really when I closed myself like for two months in one room and didn't get out. Then I could really make um, a lot of animations, but in two months, then you had like four or five minutes of animation. So it was worth really um, dealing with that. Luckily, I have now some assistants that can uh, help me with that. And the animations I'm now working on are like the animations of Icarosum, where you're really flying through the sculpture, or the animation of uh, Snibbertat. So it are much more animations that are connected in an exhibition context, and not any more animations you are really looking in a cinematic uh, view of that. Um, but you can find some uh, fragments on, uh, on my website. Uh, yeah. Uh, with the, the tablets that we use now, which yeah. is something more uh, an interface more uh, practical for us, uh, there are some some applications that try to give us some power over sculpting sculpting yeah. images in 3D. Have you tried some? And do you think this is a, a good way of people trying out sculpting? using new mediums, since they don't use clay, yeah. but, but they could be artists in the, the, this new medium that we have? Yeah, I, I think there are several things. Uh, now, today, um, you don't need anymore to have uh, two go good hands to uh, make a sculpture. If you can draw it on computer, you print it, and you have something physical. So that's, of course, a change in the world. But what is, for me, really disappointing is I come still from um, an experience where I really worked in clay. I don't do that a lot anymore, but I, I have that experience. And I can really make those really huge sculptures without making a scale model because I have my experience and I can visualize that. And I think that's a problem with a lot of designers. They design a shoe, they put it to the factory, it comes out of the machine and, oh, what a ugly thing. Uh, I thought it would be different. They don't have any more that experience of really finding uh, how to teach you that. And I don't know if you ever saw that, but um, there are already um, experiments and machines like uh, you see like a virtual vase. You can really adapt it and you can click and it print a vase that you just sculpted just by, uh, with virtual projection. So in the future, I think it will be possible to see maybe the blue head uh, running around, okay, doing this, doing that. Um, you have uh, 2 3D print. Uh, I don't know if you ever heard about it, but it's like um, one of the Kickstarter projects. You have just a pen and it's uh, writing in plastic. So, yeah, there's crazy new tools. Um, you have a lot of um, 
uh, talks about um, uh, the gun. Uh, everybody here probably uh, 3D print gun. You can uh, print in uh, 30 hours. The only thing that is still from metal is uh, the pin and uh, the bullet. Uh, so it's not anymore, anymore traceable with Eurostar, uh, with airplanes. Um, it's a guy of 25 uh, in America that invented it and that put uh, just a 3D file on the internet. It was downloaded for a few thousand uh, times in a few hours. So the question is, uh, what will 3D printing do? Also, the 3D print show in November, they have the, the big slogan, uh, Internet changed uh, the previous century, 3D printing will be the next step. It will be a lot more um, changing for the world than that the Internet does. Uh, what happens if everybody has a machine in his house, if nobody needs any more um, uh, a factory? Uh, you just have your own factory in home. Um, again, in um, the medical sector, if somebody had um, a hole in his skull, they needed to be three months in coma until the metal plate was made really tiny. Um, they sculpted it and uh, they could put it. No, you take a 3D scan, they print, and in two days they can operate. So it, it's, it's changing, but I think uh, definitely that will be new tools. And uh, I'm also self working uh, much more with uh, Zebras to, to get really more detail in it. But um, yeah, it's, it's going fast. <laughs> there are uh, some more questions. Thank. Oh, we've got one more question, Gun. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So, sorry. Um, it was just interesting what you were talking about there. Um, you were talking about I, I'm a sculptor myself, and yeah. so I'm kind of interested in the way that you're talking about um, how the technology is being used now. So people using um, so like the the tablet to make yeah. make work and stuff, and then you come from a more traditional background, so you're used yeah. to actually using the clay and so sort of like you get a feel and it's that tactile element do you do you miss that because i mean obviously a lot of your sculptures yep. are incredibly organic in yep. in the way that they use so do you do you find that the sculpture you're, you're missing something as a sculptor by using this Ho technology um yes and no um of course uh, unfortunately the idea of a uh, sculpture is not anymore eh? the idea of a hawk uh, an artist that is on his addict so at the same time, I'm now an artist and a manager. I would prefer to be full-time in uh, my workshop uh, working on sculptures, but with that, I cannot earn my money. Uh, you need to go to present your work, uh, to uh, have connection with creators, to uh, have connection with clients. So on that level, you're bo working on both levels. And uh, unfortunately, uh, I could develop my work and I have no really huge workspace that I'm uh, rebuilding. And I'm really going with, uh, on the one side, a uh, digital studio where we are designing sculptures on computer, 3D printing. But on the other side, really going back to making clay models, to making uh, really huge sculptures manually. And that will be the nice thing to go to a 3D print show where you not have only 3D prints that are just uh, playing off with the technology but where you have the connection and I really hope to make sculptures where I put um, uh, fragments of uh, clay together with 3D prints and things like that because now you get a lot of guys that are making 3D prints but they never used another material and I think that will be my strength that I'm actually standing with white foot in a digital area and with one foot in a more uh, classical traditional sculpture and I'm really um, uh, believe that uh, not the only one but uh, the combination uh, can be much more virtual. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much, Nick. Can I get a round of applause for Nick, yeah. please? Thank you. Yeah. Next on stage will be Alvaro Justin giving you a talk on making robotics easier using Arduino and Python. Thank you very much. I'll be at three o'clock.